Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I thought we'd do in today's video, just a little bit of a comparison really. I've got a couple of twig stoves here. These are the ones which I own. I've got the bush box and just a little cheap one here which I purchased from Amazon. So I thought we'd do in today's video, just a little bit of a boil off. Just see which one of these stoves actually gets the water boiling the fastest. So I can just make myself a nice cup of tea. But also talk about the materials that have been used, the time in which they take to construct. And if I was to lose both of these stoves, is the one which I'd choose over the other if I was going to purchase one again. For those of you which watch the channel regularly, you would have actually seen these stoves featured on some of the videos which I've done in the past. I've never had to use them both at the same time. So like I mentioned, it'd be interesting just to see which is the most efficient. Is it worth spending the big money on things like the bush box? Or can you actually get away with paying the cheaper prices just on these little stoves here made over in China? So the bush box itself around about £30-35, so it's more than four times the price of this stove here. So is it four times better? Does it burn four times as more efficiently? Is it four times stronger? You know, that's something that we're going to find out or is it worth just spending just a little bit of money and just buying just one of these little cheap stoves again with stoves it's not like the pride of ownership of owning a nice knife or a nice axe these kind of things just get burnt out boiled to death and also they get knocked about and just thrown on the ground thrown in the packs and the likes so we just start off with the cheaper stove out of the two and this is the little one here which i purchased from amazon this was eight or nine pound i think it's eight pound 95 actually and what you're getting here is a nice little stainless steel stove. And when you actually purchase it, it comes with three parts. You have to get the stove itself, the ash plate, and a little spirit pan, you know, which I threw away. That was a load of rubbish. And then it just comes in a little cheap nylon bag. Again, you know, the bag hasn't got to be brilliant. It's just to store the stove in at the end of the day, just to stop the soot and residue just from passing from your stove just to the inside of your pack. So when it comes to constructing it, with it being this one piece here, or four pieces actually just fastened together just by the brackets here, or the engine, so to say. If there's any kind of problems with these, I'm sure you could repair them quite easily. But, uh, you know, on the 15 or 20 times I've actually used the stove, I've certainly had no problems or issues with it. So when it comes to making this up or constructing it, very quick and very simple. It's just a case of just getting hold of the ash plate and just placing it just in one of the slots here. And then what we're going to do is just fold the rest of the stove around it. And then we're just going to get the little lugs there and just pull them back, drop them into place. And that's that stove ready to go. And again, you know, if you've got cold hands, low light conditions, maybe you're wet, this would be my preferred option, just down to the ease of constructing it, and also the speed of what it actually took. So comparing that with the bush box, you are paying quite a bit more money, like I mentioned, you're paying anywhere between £30-£35 for these kind of stoves. And if you wanted to go for the larger sizes, I've actually seen these kind of things going up to £60. So what you get for your £30, it comes in a nice little cotton bag. Again, you know, you can actually pick these bags up off Amazon or eBay. I've actually seen 10 of these for around about a pound. So if it is that you buy one of the little cheaper stoves, you don't like the little nylon bag, you could quite easily just buy a few of these and just actually store just your little cheaper stove in them. So the bush box comes in separate parts. There's eight separate parts in total. So again, more parts is going to take longer to construct. And God forbid that you're going to lose any of these kind of parts whilst you're out. It then means you're going to render the stove useless. And one of the other differences between this stove and the other stove is you've got to be a bit more careful and a bit more precise when you're putting everything together. So we're just going to start off here, just with the two side pieces. I've actually just separated everything out here, just into the parts, just make things a little bit easier. And we've got the ash plate and also the pan. And if you notice there, there's just a couple of little flanges on the sides and they just go into the little slots here, just in the bottom of the stoves. So we're just going to place those in. And it doesn't matter how many times you put these stoves together, you always find that they, they are a little bit fiddly. So just making sure that everything drops in nicely and securely, you know, just going to make things just a little bit easier. Once you've actually got them two parts together, I just like to turn just the stove on its side. And then choosing one of the side pieces, again, just using the little lugs here, just on the little lugs on the stove itself. It's just a case of just positioning them in. Just making sure that you hold everything else together. And then just slide them down just so that they click into place. Just like so, and then that's pretty much the stove set up. We can just rotate it round then. Again, just holding everything together. I'm just going to use just the other section, just locating them lugs. And then just click them into place, and that's pretty much the stove there, set up and ready to go. So again, you know, once it is actually constructed, it's a very sturdy stove. The materials that they've used is twice the thickness. So again, you know, the weight of this stove itself is quite heavy. It's around about 260 grams. But, you know, it does come with a couple of extra little parts, which is trivets, which is something that the other stove doesn't include. So again, it just means then you can actually use smaller cups, smaller bottles and the likes, without them actually falling through and disappearing into the fire itself. 
So now we have both stoves put together, you can actually just check out and just look at the sizes there. Both very similar, both classed as medium sized stoves. You can actually get an XL version of the bush box. You can actually get larger versions of these and you can also get micro versions of them. So again, the weight of them, 130 grams for this little cheap one here from China and the bush box around about 260 grams. Again, so with weight as you may know, factor for buying one of these stoves. Again, you know, this is the lighter option, but certainly the more durable, the more heavy duty you'd have to go to the bush box. So these are made over in Germany compared to China. Again, that's probably got something to do with the price of them. And if you just look at the difference here, just in the uh, the feeding port at the front, this little cheaper stove here is giving you a larger feeding port, something which I do like compared to this over here, over in the bush box. So what I've got here, I've just actually split just a little bit of wood down. I thought if we use the same wood for both stoves, when it comes to just testing which one works more efficiently, which one boils the water the fastest, as long as we're using the same kind of wood, it just means then that the test is going to be equal. So the wood here, this little piece of dry pine, I've actually just found this, just split it down like I said. But these stoves themselves, you know, these would burn any old twigs. If you're using, uh, you know, things like fuel tabs or also spirits, you know, these stoves work equally as well, you know, when it comes to those. If you notice just on the bush box, it does come with an extra slot at the back here and that's purely for the fact so you can actually just lift everything up and if you wanted to you could just use a little trange here spit it burner you can just actually just place that inside there and actually just cook you know using that and again with this i've actually shown just on the review which i did you know your spit it burner would actually drop just on the inside of there you know and works in the same kind of manner again just to make sure that everything's as equal as possible you know so we can just make sure you know the test is done you know to the best ability i'm going to use the same mug the reason being, you know, I'm going to go with the uh, with the stainless steel mug. It's purely for the fact that it's on the little cheap stove here. They don't give you any kind of trivets. So the smaller titanium mug, which I like to use, you know, barely balances just on the uh, on the top of that stove compared to the bigger stainless steel mug. And that's the beauty, I think, you know, one of the... Uh, Probably the advantages of the bush box itself, like I mentioned, does come with these trivets again. So if you're using smaller cups, smaller bottles and the like, that they don't drop straight through the centre. Once you're happy that the fuel's going, we're just going to place the mug just straight on top of the stove here. And we're just going to start the stopwatch. And then it's just a case like any other kind of feeding, you just got to make sure that you've got plenty of fuel at hand. And then we're just going to keep just placing these little sticks in. Just making sure that we don't knock the mug off the top. So the camera will pick that up now, this water started to boil and that's taken 13 minutes. So not overly fast, but you know, by no stretch of the imagination, if you wanted to boil water in a nice safe manner, you know, these wood burning stoves are the way to go. So we'll just take that off now. So that's 13 minutes for this little cheap stove. And uh, I did actually put just a few more little sticks on. You know, we didn't take much more fuel than what I had on initially. So we're just gonna just let that burn out and just off camera here, I'll just make myself a nice cup of tea. And again, once we're happy, we're just going to place the mug just straight on top there. I'm just going to start the watch again. And just see how long now, just how long it takes this to boil.
And again, this water's now come to the boil, just a little bit faster. We've actually got that down to just over 11 and a half minutes. So just a little bit quicker, just using this stove. Now, you know, is it boiling down to the fat, you know, that it's anything to do with the stove itself? Or is it just purely down to the fat, you know, perhaps just a little bit difference just in the amount of airflow, you know, and the kind of things like that. So regardless which stove boiled the water the fastest, the result at the end of the day was going to be a positive one, and that's always a nice cup of tea. But out to the two stoves, which one would I prefer? They both got pros and they both got cons. So just starting off with the cheapest stove out of the two, probably the most beneficial part of it, with the simplicity and the ease of actually constructing it. Just having that one single piece, just being able just to roll it over, and then just having them two lugs there, which just clip into place, was nice and easy, nice and simple. Again, you know, if you've got wet hands or maybe you're cold, low light conditions, you know, I'd probably opt for this kind of setup, you know, over the bush box, purely for the fact for the number of pieces, which I'll, I'll cover in a second. Again, one thing which I did like about it is the feeding port, a nice large feeding port. Certainly when the, when the stove's lit, there's less fear then of actually burning yourself when it is that you need to carry on feeding the stove. And then just down to the time, the 13 and a half minutes, well, just a little bit slower than what the bush box was, you know, but uh, using the same fuel, the same amount of water. I'm probably just going to put that down to the airflow. The weather at the moment's fluctuating up and down and, uh, you know, one minute it's very breezy and the next minute it's gone. So just taking a look at the bush box, out of the two, this is probably the more heavy duty, the more sturdier. But with that being said, you've got double the weight. So if it is that you're not worried too much about the weight, but you're looking for an heavy duty stove, you know, probably then the bush box would be the way to go. But again, you know, all these multiple parts, it did take a lot longer to set up. Again, if you're cold, if you're wet, low light conditions, you know, would you opt for this? You know, and all this kind of thing, you know, it boils down to your own personal opinion. You know, all this is just my personal opinion. I'm not saying you've got to go for this or you've got to go for the other. You know, I'm just showing you the differences between the two. You know, purely, you know, which ones I like, you know, which ones I like to use. And again, you know, just going on to the multiple pieces, one thing which that little stove didn't have, which the bush box did, is obviously the trivets. And these are going to certainly help if it is, like I mentioned, if you're using small mugs, you know, smaller, thinner bottles and the likes. And again, you know, the beauty of these is you can either have them two ways. There's two little slots in there. So you can actually have them so they just protrude just the top of the stove if you want that little bit more airflow just to come across. Or if you wanted to, you just use just the bigger grooves there, which I've had them today. And that just makes that just sit nice and flush just against the top of the stove. So that just leaves us with the $50 million question. If I was to lose both of these stoves today, which one would I go out and replace? Would I spend £30 on a bush box? Or would I spend probably £10 or £15 and just buy a couple of these cheap Chinese stoves? Just looking at the bush box, if it is that you're looking for an heavy duty, good quality stove, then the bush box would be the one. But for weight, I'd probably go just with the cheaper option for ease of construction, the speed of it. Then again, you know, I'd probably go with the cheaper option. When it come down to the boiling times, very similar times, the bush box was just a minute or so, just that little bit quicker, but like I mentioned, that could have been purely down just to the airflow, what was blowing under the top, just helping to feed the fires, so I don't think there was anything in it. So I'd probably say at the end of the day, I'd probably go with the cheaper option over the bush box, but again, you know, this is all my own personal opinion. You know, there's people out there which might, which might disagree with me, but I'm holding in my hand here, a stove which does the job. I've used it around about 10 or 15 times, like I mentioned. No warping, you know, no real major issues with it. And like I mentioned, the speed of what it is to put together and also take down, you know, certainly outweighs the heavy dutiness of the bush box. So there we have it guys, I hope that's been a little bit of help to some of you out there which may be looking at these kind of things, just showing you that you don't have to spend a fortune, you know, and you don't always have to worry if you're not spending a lot of money, it doesn't necessarily always mean it's rubbish, just showing you, again, you know, I'd probably just go that little cheaper stove, it did what I wanted it to do, it doesn't weigh very much, and it's very simple to put together. So like always guys, I'd just leave them to say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video, like always, until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.